A new high-resolution panorama from Perseverance reveals features of a giant hole in the ground made in an instant by a rock from space. Thanks to its size and speed, that rock had the force of a nuclear bomb. On this episode of Mars Guy. A month ago, Perseverance rolled up to an opening in the rim of Belva Crater, where it could get a look inside at the same time it was checking out a strip of fractured bedrock. At about 900 meters across, the crater could easily contain a football stadium with plenty of room for parking. The 110 millimeter zoom on MassCam Z was used to shoot 152 separate images that were then assembled into this panorama. Thanks to the strange entrance ramp into the crater, which may itself be an eroded crater, the rim is hard to recognize. But it starts here, as shown with Mars Guy for scale, and then rises up along a ridge that appears to be covered in windblown material before transitioning to a bench of outcrop, probably the same stuff Perseverance is parked on. It then transitions to a more prominent rim, which wraps around with limited outcrop exposures until this portion, where things get interesting. Look at the layers of outcrop in this location and notice how they're sloping. There's more nearby, with an exposure that's especially prominent in the orbital view. Now its strange orientation can be clearly understood as layers of sloping rock. You might think that the sloping orientation comes from the impact event that made the crater or even post-impact adjustments. After all, most layered rocks form horizontally. But thanks to the orbital view, we know that there's strange curvilinear terrain outside the crater. And thanks to a cross-section of this terrain exposed on a hill that reveals sloping layers, we can hypothesize that they were formed as point bar deposits in meander bends of an ancient river, as I presented in the previous episode. Conveniently, that same hill is visible through a large gap in the rim of Belva Crater, reinforcing the idea that the exposures of sloping layers in the crater were formed the same way before the impact happened. It's also convenient for this analysis that Belva Crater is almost the same size as one of the best known and best preserved impact craters on Earth, which formed about 50,000 years ago in my home state of Arizona, before there was a state or a country. Commonly known as Meteor Crater, its proper name is Beringer Meteorite Crater. The strangely square shape is thought to be due to the influence of pre-existing fractures in the landscape, known as joints, directing the excavation flow field. Notice that there are layers of rock exposed in the crater walls and that they are mostly horizontal, although with some slumping and offsets in places. Nowhere do they display the same sloping orientation as the layers in Belva Crater, but they do actually tilt upward thanks to the explosive force of the impact process. In the case of Meteor Crater, it's been estimated that a nickel iron meteorite about 30 to 50 meters in size, weighing 300,000 tons and traveling at 12 kilometers per second, exploded upon impact with a force of about two and a half megatons of TNT, or about 150 times the force of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Most of the original meteor is gone, essentially vaporized and deposited along with excavated material in a layer of ejecta surrounding the crater, which then eroded away over time. Still, many surviving bits of the meteorite have been recovered, including the biggest one yet found at 639 kilograms. This has me wondering if some seemingly out of place bits of rock observed by Perseverance at the edge of Belva Crater just might be bits of the bomb from space that made it.